untap your full potential with the untapped deck tracker. Both the in-game overlay and the personal stats provide a lot of value. Download it for free today using the link below and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Historic Games video. Today we're taking a look at a goblin Charbelcher combo deck which was recently introduced through the retro artifacts from the Brothers War. A 4 mana rare artifact can pay 3 mana tap it and then reveal cards from the top of our library until we reveal a land card and then Charbelcher deals damage equal to the number of non-land cards revealed this way to any target. If the revealed land happens to be a mountain, the Charbelcher deals double that damage instead. But we're not actually playing any mountains in this deck. In fact, we're not actually playing any real lands whatsoever. That way when the Charbelcher activates it can one hit KO the opponent as we'll go through the entire deck. Now how do we pull that off? How do we actually cast a Charbelcher without any lands? Well we're still playing the modal dual faced lands from Zendikar which are all spells on the front and then the back side we can play as a land often entering the battlefield tapped so that's a pretty big drawback but we also have access to these mythic lands. Seagate Restoration as well as Shadow Skull Smashing can be played as an untapped land at the cost of 3 life. That way we could still maybe play a turn 4 Charbelcher and then turn 5 activate it to kill the opponent. But because we're playing Historic we have access to a few more tools to speed things up and that's where Iron Crack Feet comes in handy. 4 mana Sorcery adding 7 red mana to our mana pool but we can only cast one more spell this turn. Conveniently that leaves enough mana to play Charbelcher and have 3 leftover mana to activate it to one shot the opponent. So that can speed up the kill by one whole turn which can make a world of difference in a format as fast as Historic. And then we've got a few more tools to speed things up. At 1 mana there's Strike it Rich to make a treasure token can also be flashed back for 200 red. And at 2 mana we could discard a Magma Opus to also make a treasure token. That way we can maybe combo off a turn sooner as well. Then we also have the full set of Faithless Looting to draw to and then discard to to help us assemble the various combo pieces. Can also be flashed back from the graveyard. And then we're playing Strangle as our 1 mana interaction of choice to deal 3 damage to a creature or planeswalker at sorcery speed. Playing this over all other instant speed variants mainly because of the blue red wizards deck which happens to have a ton of three toughness creatures that we want to kill cards like symmetry sage dreadheart arcanist and balmore which can otherwise threaten to kill us before we can potentially combo off then we also have Brotherhood's End, the new 3 mana sweeper from the Brothers War, can deal 3 damage to each creature and each planeswalker, so that's another great catch up mechanism against creature decks. And we also have the flexibility to destroy all artifacts with mana value 3 or less instead, which can come up when playing against a Thopter Tribal deck, which can make some 4 4 artifact tokens, which would not die to the 3 damage. So that's why I'm playing this over alternatives like Sweltering Suns or Anger of the Gods, and then it can also be useful in a mirror match where it can maybe destroy destroy some treasure tokens from the opponent as well. And then we also have two copies of Seize the Spoils, have to discard a card to draw to and make a treasure token as well. And all these treasure tokens we're generating are also necessary if we want to set up our own indomitable creativity, which we can cast for x equals 1, destroying our own treasure token. And then for each artifact and or creature destroyed this way, its controller will reveal cards from the top of their library until a creature or artifact is revealed and puts it onto the battlefield. So we can turn a treasure into a goblin charbelcher, which also gives us access to virtually a Eight copies of Charbelcher throughout the deck as long as we can enable creativity and in corner cases we can also use this to maybe blow up opposing permanence from the opponent. And then we also have four copies of Pact of Negation to round out our spells here as a free counter spell, which is very important when facing control strategies that are relying on counter spells to stop our Charbelcher. Now we can use a Pact of Negation and we don't need to worry about the drawback since we're planning to win the game on the spot for the most part. Although we do have to be careful when combining it with Iron Crack Feet because we can only cast one more spell once Feet resolves. So if the opponent times their counter spells correctly, they can maybe wait until Feet resolves, we cast our Charbelcher and then the opponent can counter Charbelcher and then we'll no longer be able to use our Pact of Negation. So there can be situations where it's a bit awkward but of course we can also wait until we have enough mana to play and activate Charbelcher and then a Pact will still be a very nice interaction to have access to. And then I guess we can also go over the lands here but for the most part we're playing these as lands instead of casting them. Sometimes Hazard can deal one damage, sometimes we cast Valakut Awakening to refresh our hand to look for additional combo pieces and there's also Shatter Skull Smashing that can maybe be used as a removal spell to deal with some smaller creatures but I doubt we're ever casting a card like Seagate Restoration, Kazul's Fury or the Treachery. 
And then we can also potentially cast an 8 mana Magma Opus, can also come up against controlling strategies where we can maybe use this as a way to bait the opponent into using a counter spell so we can untap and then win with Charbelcher. So yeah, that's our deck. I guess we're also playing Kahira as companion as a free roll mainly here, so I wouldn't get any comments pointing out that I could be playing a companion, but I guess there's corner cases where the opponent has a Liliana or a Croxa, and we just want an extra card to discard. Could also be helpful with maybe a Faithful Sluting or Cease the Spoils, but usually games don't last long enough for Kahira to be relevant. So yeah, that's our deck. Now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the draw. This hand has two lines in it. We can make some treasure with Strike It Rich to eventually get our creativity to find Charbelcher. And then there's a ton of interaction. So depending on the matchup, if Strangle and Brotherhood's End is good, this might be okay. As so we'll eventually get our Charbelcher going. Okay, turn one Sentinel. We could also kill with Hazard, so probably fine to play Awakening as our first land. But I might just end up strangling it instead. Thalia, that's a problem. At least Brotherhood's End is gonna be better here. And uh, yeah, I can take three to cast Strike It Rich, which then maybe sets up a sweeper in the future. We do have an Iron Crack Feet in hand, so that can set up the kill with Creativity if we have a treasure to sacrifice. I think we should try and kill Thalia here while we can. And then I'll strangle as opposed to hazard to keep it as a land. And hope they don't have a backup. It's gonna be an Aspirant. Can put a counter on the Sentinel right away now that it's back to its original form. Okay, there's a Charbelcher, so if we get to four mana for feet, we can kill our opponent, which means we could already get there next turn. Wouldn't be able to pay the Sentinel tax, unfortunately. And we'll pass. So no Thalia, and we're good. Spellbinder, that's painful. So that can exile probably Ironcrack Feet. Could also go for Charbelcher itself. But then we can still cast our Sweeper at the very least. And their opponents actually exile Brotherhood's End, alright? So they probably don't know what's incoming. Iron Crack Feats. Opponent gets to draw. Play Charbelcher. And activate. And there we have it. And that's with a turn 1 Sentinel into a turn 2 Thalia and a Spellbinder, so it doesn't get much better in terms of disruption from the Mono White deck. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and what do we think of this one? We have Creativity, we have double opus to make treasures. So yeah, this might be worth a keep. Opponent playing Gigantha, so it could be blue-red wizards, in which case an early strangle can also buy more time. And then for now I'll play Seagate untapped so we can discard magma opus. Still nothing from our opponents. And yeah, I think I just play a tap land here. Planning to make another treasure. And then hope to find maybe an Iron Crank feat as well. Opponent's gonna play with Fire Our Face. Is this before the draw step still? Looks like it was main phase. And Static Discharge also going face. Our opponent's holding a ton of burn spells here, but doesn't have the creatures to back it up. Brotherhood's End, more interaction. I think now I could go for Creativity to get Charbelcher and then next turn activate it. So let's make some red here, just to be sure. X equals 1. Get a Charbelcher. And our opponent either needs artifact removal or they need to deal 12 damage, which is not impossible with maybe a hasty Arcanist getting back a discharge. 
Alright, another discharge down to eight. For two mana, can't think of much. Another discharge down to three. Iron Crank Feet is a turn late, but Charbelcher will do it. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and our hand's looking great. We've got Iron Crank Feet and Charbelcher, even a Pact of Negation, in case we're up against counter spells. So just need to get to four mana in the first place, and then we're good. Have three lands already. And a looting to help out, maybe discarding Pact of Negation if we don't need it. So we'll lead with a tapped hazard, keep smashing for maybe a turn four untapped land. Opponent with a turn one swift spear, okay. So red aggro can certainly kill us before we combo off, but strangle helps. So for now we'll strangle, play tapped hazard. Also have to keep the three damage in mind, so we're at a virtual 16 life here. And Kumano turn two. So now we just need to loot into a land. And then uh, turn after we should be able to combo off. And there's a land already. But I guess it doesn't hurt to loot here. And looting pact can go. And I'll play tapped restoration. This way I can technically still cast a 1 mana spike field hazard, although don't expect it to be relevant with double kumano putting counters on the opponent's creatures. It's gonna be a burning tree, that's fine. And a frostodon, that's all fine and good. No need to play spike field hazards. And yeah, that's a turn 4 kill. Luckily, we were on the play, otherwise we might have been a turn late here. But yeah, there we have it, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and we've got both Feet and Charbelcher, and uh, yeah, at least two lands, so definitely a keep. And then we can loot to maybe improve our hands, Magma Opus to make a treasure, and uh, play Awakening Tapped. Although don't expect to cast Hazard, opponent blue-white. Okay, can be a tough matchup if our opponent has Counterspell, so we might need to dig for Pact of Negation. Although most of my hand is pretty good. Could also deal three to myself to make a treasure already. Although I think I'm better off just playing this tapped. And then next turn, could already try and cast Seize the Spoils. Ooh, Strict Proctor, I see. So opponent probably a Lotus Field deck, and uh, don't think it interacts with our combo in any way. So yeah, we have some options, but I think just going for Tapped Awakening, End of Turn Magma Opus, Untap, we can combo and even pay one for like a Jewelry Disruption, or I can go digging with Faithless Looting to find a Pact of Negation to guarantee it, and... Uh, what do we get rid of? I guess now Awakening and maybe a land. Deal three to myself to uh, make another treasure. And then hope they tap out basically. Or we find a Pact of Negation. Okay, there is smashing, so yeah, I don't really feel comfortable going for it here. So I could either flashback looting or cast Seize the Spoils, which they might be tempted to counter. Still no Pact. Do I cast Faithless Looting is the question. I think I'm just gonna play this tapped. Since we might be better off going for the combo without Iron Crank Feet. Okay, so 
flashback looting now. Still no pact. So do I just cast uh, Seize the Spoils at this point? We're also at a point where we can maybe bait out a counterspell by hard casting Magma Opus in the opponent's end step. Yeah, I think I'm just gonna play this Restoration Tapped and pass. And then next turn, I can try and set up maybe a Magma Opus if we draw land. I guess it would have to be an untapped land for that to work. Okay, Awakening. So I'll keep being patient. Flashing back, looting may not be the worst. And uh, do we care about killing the Strict Proctor? I don't think so. So a Strangle and maybe Iron Crank feet we can discard. Although that will make it clear that we have one in hand. Play Tapped Awakening, pass. And then next turn we can go for Magma Opus, end of turn. There's a Lotus Field. So they get to keep that in play. Of course our opponent could have two counter spells at this point. Brotherhood's End is not too helpful. And now if we let them untap with Lotus, they'll have even more mana to work with. Narset to prevent card draw. I guess we want to respond. So kill Strict Proctor. One to our opponents. And then tap down some blue mana. And hope to bait out a counter spell. That worked. And there's Pact of Negation. Okay, so now the only issue is if I Iron Crank Feet and then cast Char Belcher, our opponents could counter and then we won't be able to cast Pact because of our own Iron Crank Feet. So I'm really hoping they countered Iron Crank Feet instead and then we're good to go. Although now with another Belcher, yeah, if we had one more mana we could just cast Belcher with Pact back up and activate it. But I guess we'll give this Iron Crank Feet a try. And uh, hope for the best. Could attack Narset first. In case that prompts a response. You are a mighty warrior. I concede. Okay, put on lots of resolve. So yeah, we'll see if Char Belcher does too. I doubt it. Well, I guess it did. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. That's a lot of blue mana that doesn't help me cast creativity. So I don't think I can keep Fury and then turn to Strike It Rich. Yeah, I don't think that's gonna work. This could work. And then one Treachery can go. I'll keep two Treasure Makers, three lands. And see where that leads us. To run Ladder Elves. Okay. So if opponents on Elf Tribal with a turn to Archdruid, we could be in trouble. Turn to Marwyn, much the same, although luckily found a Strangle. So next turn we can either Strike it Rich or probably better to just use Magma Opus. Collected Company, still powerful here. What can they find? Two lords, visionary plus clan caller. Okay, so we'll uh, pass after playing a tapped awakening. And then next turn we can char belch, turn after activate. Not sure if that's going to be fast enough. There's archdruid. Okay, so that's going to pump the team so they can deal 10 and another 10 next turn. So, yeah, I need to find my Sweeper, pretty much, or an Iron Crack feed. Those are my two outs.
and that's neither. So yeah, I can seize the spoils and then maybe still find a strangle, although I don't think that saves me here. Brotherhood's end, okay. Well, I guess that still works. Three to everything. And we're back in the game. Next turn, Charbelch. Turn after, activate. Let's see if our opponent can deal seven in the meantime. And then we can activate Charbelcher at instant speed. So it could also Pact of Negation in between. Okay, our opponent may have disconnected here, but we'll see. Play Charbelcher pass. And then we're just one activation away from 47 damage. Okay, and our opponent explodes. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, up against Gigantha, so maybe another Wizard's deck. And my hand has the Charbelcher, but it's pretty light on lands. In fact, only Restoration, which doesn't make red. So I'm afraid I'm gonna have to mulligan. This one's not much better, but I uh, guess we'll have to keep this. Bottom looting, since I think I'll be able to make use of Strangle. And just play this one tapped for now. And then we'll need to find a Charbelcher at some point. For now, I'll strike it rich, play tapped hazard, wait on looting to get a bit more information about our hands and what we are potentially able to discard or not. There's a Symmetry Sage. Pact I'm not gonna need. So we can loot, discarding Pact and maybe a strike it rich. There's Charbelcher, so I'm not gonna need creativity. And then we will uh, strangle the Sage, and I could strike it rich again if I'd want. Although it doesn't really make a difference since next turn I'm going to cast the uh, Charbelcher, and then I can activate it to turn after. Upkeep, play with fire to improve their draw step. So yeah, unless our opponent's packing a braid, which could be the case, if Charbelcher is popular enough, they might have adjusted their deck to include it. But now an Iron Crank feat means even a Braid is not gonna help. And activate. Sweet. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and this hand has quite a bit of potential. Since we have the Iron Crank feat to set up a creativity and seize the spoils to make a treasure to sacrifice. So let's play Tapped Awakening. I don't think we'll need to cast it. Maybe I'll cast a Hazard, but that's going to be our next land. And yeah, we're playing the Mirror Match. So having the Iron Crank feat is important. Pact of Negation, not going to be useful in most cases here. I guess never mind, our opponent is playing regular lands, so they may not be playing a version that uh, has no lands like ours. Strike it rich is still good, but I think we can seize the spoils instead. And then discard probably Pact of Negation, or do we think we can still maybe get some use out of it? Yeah, I guess there's maybe a scenario where it could still help. Okay, so next turn we should have it with smashing into feet and then we still have the treasure to sacrifice to creativity. And it's gonna be a big score, making two treasure. Yeah, I guess having Pact of Negation for an opposing Pact of Negation could also be a thing here. So, I guess the one drawback is Iron Crank Feet only letting us cast one spell this turn. Charbelcher to the face.
Thrill of Possibility and Response. Don't think that's going to find anything useful. As our opponent explodes, sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, facing Gigantha, so it could be Blue Red Wizards. And what do we think of our hands? We have no real interaction like Strangle or Brotherhood's End. Can make some treasure, creativity, missing Iron Crank feet, but at least most of our lands come into play untapped. So yeah, I'll try it. And then we'll probably take quite a bit of damage off our mana, which is not great against an aggressive spell creature deck, but uh, yeah, let's go with the tapped cave for now. Make sure we're playing against what we think we are playing against. And yeah, turn one Symmetry Sage, one of the better starts. Okay, so definitely going to need to have a treasure to sack to creativity. Might still be worth it to loot and try and find Iron Crank feet, since that will shave off a turn off for a combo kill. Um, or I can just strike it rich, play Tapped Awakening, and then take it from there, basically. Yeah, I guess we'll play it slow. Avoid taking unnecessary damage. And then next turn, I can maybe cast a Looting. Another Sage into maybe a Reckless Charge. Yep. So that's going to hit for 9. And we could already be dead next turn. So Brotherhood's End would be a good draw. Fury, not so much. I can loot to maybe find a Strangle as well. Right, there's a Brotherhood's End, so I can cast it if I deal 3 to myself, which is uh, probably necessary. And then what to discard here? I guess Fury can go and another Looting. So we're at 8, but at least we dealt with early creatures here. Then next turn I probably have to flashback Strike It Rich. If there's another charge, we're in trouble. Another creativity, so flashback. And play tap to restoration. Could of course also cast Smashing to deal some damage here. End of turn play with fire. So if they flashback charge on the soul scar, I go to one. It's gonna be a Balmore first. And what's their last card? Play with fire. So I'm still alive. But I'm gonna need to draw an iron crack feat here to be able to win next turn. And there's an iron crack feat. Okay. Well, better lucky than good, as they say. And our opponent explodes. They didn't even wait to see the Charbelcher here, but we had the leftover mana to activate it. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. We've got our Charbelcher. We have two lands, and then Seize the Spoils can maybe help, and Looting can maybe find an Iron Crank feat. I think that's a keep. Let's see what our opponent's up to. Blue-white. So I'm guessing Strangle's not going to be very helpful. And there's the feat. So discard Strangle, maybe discard another looting. Since we can still flash those back at least. Although I don't have a third land that comes into play untapped at the moment. So my next turn's not going to be incredibly exciting. Could have been a reason to hang on to looting, maybe discard Seize the Spoils instead. Opponent holding up two mana for potential counterspell. Now, it is kind of awkward here if we want to use Pact of Negation to protect Charbelcher, then we won't be able to pay for it the turn after. But since we have two Charbelchers, this could work out. Now, opponent may also pull the trigger on a counterspell on Iron Crank Feet, in which case Pact of Negation would be enough. So now I think we do go for it. Opponent goes for Jory Disruption, so we can pact back. 
and then hope they don't have any additional counter spells here, because otherwise we die to our own pack next turn. But Feet resolves. Now we can only cast one more spell, so we can still Char Belch and activate. In this case, our opponent had a soft counter spell in Jewelry Disruption. If they had a hard counter, they would have been better off waiting to counter the Char Belcher instead of the Iron Crank Feet itself. But yeah, there we go. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, and we've got Creativity. We can make treasures with Caesar Spoils and Magma Opus. And we've got uh, two lands. It's not perfect since my lands are all tapped. And we're missing Iron Crank Feet as well, but I'll try it. Opponents might be playing a similar deck with Glass Pool Mimic as their tap land. Although, never mind, I guess it's more like a, an Angel Company deck. So let's loot, there's feet. Okay, so let's see here. Magma Opus can go. Maybe seize the spoils as well at this point. And then next turn I can Magma Opus play tap land. And then we'll still have to wait for an extra land before we can feed into creativity since we need to keep that treasure to sacrifice. Spellbinder is annoying. Can go after Iron Crack feed here for instance which will slow us down. So Iron Crank Feet exiled. Okay. At least we're not under a ton of pressure yet. Seize the spoils, not a bad draw. So now the question is, do I go for Magma Opus or just kill Spellbinder? I think that's maybe better, we'll buy us more time. Since I wouldn't be able to use Creativity next turn unless I drew an untapped land. Collected Company main phase. Also have to watch out for exposing a Char Belcher to an opposing Skyclave Apparition, which could exile it. So much better if we can actually wait to uh, combo kill our opponent in one turn. Another Spellbinder can go after Creativity, perhaps. Nope, goes for Magma Opus. And these cards are no longer in hand, so I can discard them to seize the Spoils or Awakening. But another feat is a good draw. So, I could flashback looting, I could cast Seize the Spoils. Although at this point it's unclear what to discard and what to keep. Could discard Awakening, or I could keep it as a lance to still maybe cast some spells from exile, but I guess with a replacement feat that's no longer the case. So yeah, we'll Seize the Spoils, discard Awakening, and if I draw another tap land then I can maybe go for it next turn. Or if we find a Char Belcher that also works. All right, hopefully no more Spellbinders. Company is pretty likely to find some action, but I can't use Pact here. And the uh, Cleric can destroy enchantments, not artifacts. Channeler could bounce my treasure token, I guess. So we'll see if they go for it. Opponent just draws a card. So yeah, we should have it. Just feet into Char Belcher, activate. And there we go. Nice and easy. Alright, so we got to see this new combo deck in action, and it's incredibly impressive being able to kill us early as turn 3 if you get lucky, with maybe a turn 1 or 2 make a treasure token, turn 3 Iron Crank Feet with an untapped land, and then a combo off. So it can kill incredibly quickly, it seems pretty consistent, and also not that easy to interact with, so you really need to have either discard spells or ways to counter the Char Belcher, and even then you also need a bit of pressure to back it up, otherwise you give the combo deck enough time to assemble the various pieces a second time. So yeah, not an easy deck to interact with, but if your deck is fast enough and the Char Belcher deck maybe doesn't have Iron Crank feet, it can still be a turn too slow. So yeah, that's going to do it for today's gameplay. I want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.